Misfits Audio welcomes you to Strange Stories, an audio anthology series of odd and unusual tales that can take place anywhere and anywhen. Sit back, open your ears, be comfortable, and let your imagination take flight. Remember, it's only as real as your mind makes it. Mrs. Suarez, I'm Amanda Falwell with the Department of Social Services. You're the lady I spoke with on the phone? Yes, about Mr. Sanders. I am worried about him. Why is that? That's his house across the street. The blue one? Yes. See how the mail and newspapers are piled up? Perhaps he went on vacation and forgot to stop the deliveries. No, not Senor Sanders. Why not? He doesn't go on vacation. He doesn't? Never. Why? I don't know how to put this nicely. Mr. Sanders, he is a, uh, fat man. <laughs> Even fat people go on vacation from time to time. No, he is really fat. He must weigh 400 pounds. He has been on disability and put on a lot of weight. It is not as easy for him to move around. Does he have any relatives in town? He is married, but I think his wife left him last month. I heard a lot of yelling one afternoon. I couldn't make out what it was about, and then she stormed out of the house with a suitcase, got in her car, and drove away. I haven't seen her or the car since. Do you know Mrs. Sanders' first name? Eunice. I'm sure we can track her down if there's a reason. Have you tried knocking on Mr. Sanders' door to see if he answers? Not me. I've got three kids to take care of. I'll do it. Should I call the police? Let's see if he answers the door first. If not, I'll call the police. I'm sorry to bother you, officer. Don't be silly, little lady. It's all part of the job. Mr. Sanders, it's the police. Mr. Sanders, if you're in there, please open the door. Huh. Maybe he's not home. Could be. Mr. Sanders, if you don't open the door right now, I'll be forced to break it down. Nothing. Stand back, miss. (coughs) Ah, ah, There we are. Let me go in first, in case there's trouble. Sweet mother of Jesus. I can't believe it. It's like something out of Willy Wonka. Chocolate. The whole house. The floors, the walls, furniture. Everything is made out of chocolate. I've heard of houses made out of gingerbread, but chocolate? Is it really possible for a person to create such a home? We'll be right back with Misfits Audio's latest episode of Strange Stories, The Touch. How could he have? I don't know. Do you think he's here? If he is, he shouldn't be hard to find. Mrs. Suarez said that he's obese. With all this chocolate around, I can see why. My Linda has a sweet tooth, but nothing like this. Strange. What? Well, it doesn't look like any of this chocolate has been munched on. (laughs) What did you expect? Teeth marks on the footstool? No. But why have a chocolate house if you're not going to eat it? Well, maybe it's not real. You mean we're both imagining this? Maybe it's not real chocolate. There's only one way to find out. With your permission? Go ahead. It's all in the interest of helping Mr. Sanders, after all. Hmm. Hmm? Nope, that's real chocolate. Where are you going? The kitchen. Come with me. Nothing in the fridge. Not so much as a piece of cheese. Look here. What is it? It looks like food, but it's chocolate. An apple, a piece of cake, and I think this is... It was ham. I thought they were children's toys. We'd better find Mr. Sanders right away.
Officer O'Leary, come quickly! What is... Oh my god. Who do you suppose that naked rascal is? I don't know. I heard something in the closet, I opened it, and I found him. Will you look at this? The closet door is solid chocolate. You don't suppose that's Mr. Sanders? No, look at him. He can't weigh more than a hundred pounds. Sanders weighs four times that. Whoever he is, he looks dreadful. I don't think he's bathed in quite a spell either. Or eaten. With all this chocolate around? It doesn't make any sense. We'd better get him to County General. Let me get him out of there, then I'll call an ambulance. Leave me alone. We're trying to help you. Stay away from me. You'll regret it. Don't you go threatening an officer of the law now, mister. May I speak with him? If you want to. Be careful. He may be violent. I don't think he has the strength to be violent. I'll go call the ambulance. Will a chocolate telephone work? Good question. Who's that neighbor you mentioned? Mrs. Suarez. She lives across the street in the house with all the kids' toys in the yard. I better call from her house. Will you be okay if I leave you for a few minutes? I'll be fine. I'll be back as soon as I can. We're going to get you some help, sir. Don't let anyone near me. It's dangerous. What's your name? Sanders. Archibald Sanders. In here, boys. Bring the stretcher over here. He's in the closet. Is this house made out of what I think it is? Later. You didn't try anything, did he, miss? Not a thing. Good. I didn't like leaving you. I've been talking with Mr. Sanders. That is Sanders? It is. But how did he... I'm not sure. I've told him he's going to the hospital, and he agrees he needs to go. Good for you, sir. It's for the best. However... He's very concerned that he not touch either of you EMTs. Don't you mean he doesn't want us to touch him? No. Can you get him on the stretcher without his hands touching you or your partner? Why doesn't he want... Can you? Sure. He should be an easy lift. Mr. Sanders, my name's Patrick. That's my partner, Phil. Glad to meet you both. We're going to take you to County General and let the doctors have a look at you. Sounds good to me. Do you have enough strength to hold your arms like this? I... I think so. Give it a try. That's good. Keep him like that, and we won't have any problem. Got him, Phil? Yeah. One, two, three, up! Almost done, sir. Just a second. There. Thank you. That wasn't so bad, was it? What in the name of... Holy crow! A stretcher. It's turned into chocolate. Amanda Falwell? Yes. I'm Rachel McIntyre. I'm one of the doctors attending Mr. Sanders. Will he be okay? He should be... I think we got to him just in time. What's wrong with him? He appears to be suffering from a severe case of malnutrition. But... I I know, I know. Officer O'Leary told me about where you found him. It's the strangest thing I've ever seen. We've got him on IVs now. That should build up his strength. You heard about what he did to the stretcher. Heard about it? (laughs) I saw it. We're thinking of bringing it down to the children's ward for a special treat. It should last them a good long time. All he did was touch it. Sounds like Mr. Sanders has the chocolate equivalent of the Midas touch. How could he be able to do that? I haven't the foggiest. We're running a series of blood tests. Hopefully we'll find something. I can't understand why he didn't eat the chocolate rather than waste away. He might have died if we hadn't found him. At Mr. Sanders' request... We've put him in traction to keep him from touching anything. It was too late for some of his room's furniture, but we don't want to take the chance of him, uh, chocolatizing 
any of the machinery. May I speak with him? He's pretty weak right now. Could it wait until morning? He should be in better shape then. Of course. Doctor, if he had touched one of the EMTs rather than the stretcher... I can only assume that the touchy would have turned into chocolate. What could be done then? I have no idea. As much as my professors tried, there are some things they simply didn't teach us in medical school. You have to be kidding. No, Mrs. Sanders. Your entire house is now made out of chocolate. Will my Archie be okay? They think so. The doctors are doing everything they can. I want to see him. I'm sure they'll approve. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. Would you mind if I asked you some personal questions? Not at all. I understand that you two are separated. Who do you understand that from? I'd rather not say. Hmm. I'll bet it's that Maria Suarez from across the street. Jeez, with three kids and no husband, you wouldn't think she'd have the time to be so nosy. Are you separated from Mr. Sanders? Not in the exact sense of the word. We're not preparing for a divorce. We're separated by the fact that he's living at home, and I went back to my mother so things could cool down. What caused you to break up? Mainly, chocolate. Come again. Archie has a big sweet tooth. He loves chocolate. It doesn't matter what kind. Dark, milk, white, with nuts, without nuts. I don't think he ever met a chocolate bar he didn't like. He spent a lot of our money on sweets. I suppose, though, I should be grateful. Why? Some of my girlfriends have husbands who spend the family budget on beer and cigarettes. So Archie could be worse. But excessive consumption would constitute an addiction. You can say that again. You won't know him when you see him. About a hundred pounds, you said? I think the doctor said one hundred, too. Well... I understand he was out of work on disability. Yes. He sat around the house all day, watching the tube and stuffing his face with chocolate bars. How'd he get hurt? He slipped at the bank and wrenched his back. We weren't getting his full salary while he was on disability, so all the chocolate purchases really cut into our budget. I finally gave him an ultimatum. You are the chocolate. Exactly. He didn't say a word. He just sat there on the couch. That's when I packed a bag and got out. I couldn't watch him destroy himself any longer. I still don't get it. If he loves chocolate so much, why is he in County General suffering from malnutrition? How's the patient, doctor? Better. The IVs are helping him regain his strength. I'd say he's out of the woods. That's good to hear. Also... I believe we know why he's suffering from malnutrition, even with all that chocolate around. Why? He's allergic to it. Allergic? Yes. A scratch test showed that. But he can't be. His wife told me that he loves chocolate, all kinds, can't get enough of it. A person can develop an allergy to anything at any time. What will happen to him if he eats some? Any number of things could occur. In particularly intense reactions, a patient might find it difficult to breathe because of an inflammation of the throat. It must be something like that. He couldn't eat. In a house made of chocolate, he couldn't eat. Would you like to see Mr. Sanders now? Mr. Sanders? Yes? I'm Amanda Falwell. So glad to meet you. Thank you for all your help. You're welcome. Dr. McIntyre tells me you're feeling better. I'm feeling better than when you found me, so that's an improvement. This is quite a contraption they have you in. It keeps me from touching anything. I see that not everything escaped your touch. <laughs> better a chair than the equipment. How is it that you can do this? I wish I knew. It just happened. I fell asleep one afternoon. When I woke up, bingo. At first, it seemed like a great idea. 
all the chocolate I could ever want. There's something about it, though. Dr. McIntyre says you're allergic to chocolate. Me? With all I've eaten? Yes. No wonder I couldn't eat it. I felt like I couldn't breathe. You have no idea how you got this power? None. When I couldn't eat the chocolate, I tried eating some other foods. Ham, apples, whatever I could find. They all turned to chocolate before I could take a bite. What happened after that? It's all... kind of a blur. I must have... gone off the deep end and hidden in the closet where you found me. I don't remember why. This power of yours had to come from somewhere. There must be some clues around. Maybe at the house? Perhaps at work? Where's that? The First Federal Bank on Morton Street downtown. Ask for Joe Gannon. He's my boss. That's Mr. Sanders? Yes. That picture was taken at the Christmas party last year. He tipped the scales pretty well, didn't he? He's going to need a new wardrobe. But he's well now. The doctors say he should be okay. That's good. He's a fine employee. What's his position? He's the chief loan officer. He decides who does and does not get a loan? Yes. Hmm. Do you know anything about the loan applications he's reviewed recently? No, Arch has been with the bank for years. I trust his judgment. If he denies the loan application, that's it. Case closed. May I see the applications he's denied for, say, the last couple of months? Certainly. It should all be on the computer. Do you think someone who was denied a loan did this to him? Someone who got the money certainly wouldn't have. Here you are. The loan applications for the last 60 days. As you can see, this folder contains the positive responses, and then this folder, the negative ones. There are only six negatives. First Federal tries very hard to honor loan requests. We believe that the entrepreneur of today is the CEO of tomorrow. Why would these six people have been turned down? Oh, any number of reasons. Lack of collateral and credit risk come to mind. They all seem like pretty standard business ideas. A small daycare, a garage. Wait a second. What is it? Mr. Sanders rejected a loan application on the 26th of last month from a Mr. Jared Umala. What did he want the money for? Under purpose of loan, it says to open a small fortune-telling psychic establishment. Welcome, Miss Falwell, to my humble home. Thank you. What will it be today? Shall we consult the tarot cards, the crystal ball, a wandering spirit? Perhaps you would like me to read your lifeline or some tea leaves. Not today, thank you. Do remember that as a new customer, the first 15 minutes of whatever service you choose are free of charge. That's very generous of you. It is nothing. It is merely an extra I provide to prove to you that I, Jared Umala, have the gift. What gift are you speaking of? I have many gifts, actually. I can foretell the future, contact the dead. Can you cast spells? Under certain circumstances... Do you have someone you are seeking revenge upon? No. I'm here about someone I believe you've already cast a spell on. Who would that be? Archibald Sanders. I'm... Um, I, I, I'm afraid I, I don't... Uh... I know all about your denied loan application. I've seen it. Why are you interested in Mr. Sanders? I'm a social worker. I'm trying to help him. So, huh, you're not a member of law enforcement? No. Did you cast a spell on Mr. Sanders to make everything he touches turn into chocolate? I did. Because you were denied the loan? It was the way I was denied it. Sanders sat behind his dead in his squishy body. His chair could scarcely contain him. I, I remember he was eating a three musketeers bar. I it was not a sight for anyone with a weak stomach. He told me that he could not approve my request. I found him demeaning. As he spoke, bits of chocolate dropped from his fat lips, and he made no attempt to cleanse his mouth. What would you have wanted him to say? I can understand him denying the loan. However, he should have been polite about it. Perhaps he could have said, I'm sorry that we can't give you the loan. In my country, we treat people with respect. So you made him have the chocolate touch and be allergic to chocolate? It seemed suitably ironic. Mr. Umala, what you've done may constitute a crime. 
Oh, I have harmed no one. No. Mr. Sanders is in the hospital, recovering from malnutrition. The doctors say he got there just in time to save his life. Oh, oh dear. Um, I, I must have cast a more powerful spell than I thought. If Mr. Sanders decides to press charges... Perhaps I could remove the spell? That might help. For a price? What? If Mr. Sanders... Improves my loan application, I will remove the spell. I can't believe you're bargaining when you could be facing jail time. Shall we go and speak with him? You did this to my husband? I, I did. Do you want me to arrest him? No. Surely you want to press charges. No, officer, I don't. What? Don't think for a minute, Mr. Umala that I approve of what you've done. Of course not. You said you'd remove the spell if I approve your loan request? Yes. That's blackmail. Not if Mr. Sanders doesn't press charges. Can you approve my loan? I can. That I recall you weren't looking for a great deal of money. Not to you. I'll call Joe Gannon. You'll have the money within a week. Then as a sign of good faith, I will remove the spell this evening. Thank you. I can't believe you're doing this. You're letting him get... Do you know of any other way to bring this to an end? Well, no, but... Would you like me to return your home to the way it was? Please. I will also relieve you of your chocolate allergy. Uh, don't bother. Uh, honey? I'll keep the allergy. I don't understand. I can't control my craving for chocolate. It came between us. Nearly broke up our marriage. Without a chocolate monkey on my back, dear, will you give me a second chance? Of course I will, Archie. Of course I will. And so, with the Sanders' home soon to be a chocolate-free zone, we leave Archie and Eunice to contemplate a future without Hershey bars. After Archie loses the touch and regains his strength, Dr. McIntyre will release him from the hospital and into the loving arms of his wife. That should give Mrs. Suarez something to sneak peeks at. Our thanks to Steve Anderson as the narrator, Natalie Stanfield Thomas as Amanda Falwell, Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard as Maria Suarez, Daniel Wise as Officer O'Leary, Scott Horton as Archibald Sanders, Trevor Gench as Pat, Jim Patton as Phil, Kim Giannopoulos as Dr. Rachel McIntyre, Elise Crowick as Eunice Sanders, John Speck as Mr. Gannon, and Russell Gold as Mr. Umar. The Touch was written by Mike Murphy. Music for the series was composed and performed by William Kropchinsky. Please visit his website at pureshift.com. The Sitar Solo was performed by Laurent Davis at gemendo.com. Other incidental music by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Producer, Mike Murphy. Mixer, Michael Berganz. Script editor, Arlene Osborne. Webmaster, April Sadowski. And art director, Alexa Chip. We would also like to thank Captain John Tattersack of Misfits Audio for airing this show. Mike Murphy, the author of this story, gratefully acknowledges the continued help of Arlene Osborne his scripts. This production is for enjoyment purposes only. I'm your narrator, Steve Anderson. This is an original production by Miss Fitz Audio. Copyright 2012.